All right, guys, let's jump right into it, shall we? So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab the files. And we're going to grab the files from right over here at the 3D Printed Ghostbusters Props Facebook group. Now, if you're not a member of this group, I highly recommend that you join this group. There is a community around these files, and you can come here and ask questions. You can post your build progress or anything else relating to the 3D Printed Ghostbusters Props group as well as the Proton Pack files that we're about to download. Those files were originally created by a gentleman by the name of Quentin Michaels, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, we call him Q in the community, and now my good friend Mark, or as he is known in the community, Taco Belly, has kind of joined forces with Q to make the files even better. I believe we're on Mark 4 of these files at this time, and the uh, Proton Pack parts that I'm going to be working with in my build, I believe, are Mark 2 or Mark 2.1. Um, there's a lot of changes in the Mark 4 version of the file, so please be aware that if you download the newest, newest, newest version, um, some of this might not translate, but the overall uh, build will be similar and you should be able to follow along just fine. I'm going to use the files that I've already printed because that's just going to save us a lot of time instead of printing these all again uh, using the Mark IV uh, files. But I suggest that if you're doing this for the first time, you should come here and download whatever the newest version is and at the time of the making of this video, that is going to be the Mark IV files once this video has been released it could be a newer version so make sure you come here to the 3d printed ghostbusters props uh, group to see what the newest version is i will leave a link to this group in the description so that you can join it all right so what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down under the featured tab on the 3d printed ghostbusters props group oh look there's my group for the arduino ghostbusters props so if you want to join that group shameless plug for the arduino for ghostbusters prop which is my group you can definitely find a link to that there as well so we're going to scroll down however down 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 until we get to this post here by quentin which is going to be a link to the github where the files are hosted so we're going to click on that which is going to take us to this github page and i will also leave a link to the in the description to this uh, GitHub page so that you can go directly there without without having to go to the 3D printed Ghostbusters props group. But I highly suggest you join that group because there's a lot of good information there. So you're going to come here and then we'll just take a little look here. We have the QPAC Mark IV Taco Shell, <laughs> as it is now called, which is an open source version of the Proton Pack from Ghostbusters made by Mark Carabelli. Uh, AKA Taco Belly and Quentin Michaels. Um, I don't know exactly how you pronounce his name. Mr. Co, Mr. Q. Q, yeah, of course it's Q. Anyhow, so here's a uh, sort of 3D rendering of the whole Proton Pack. You've got the wand and everything, and you see we've got some afterlife bits in there, so that's a lot of cool stuff that's been added. Uh, in this repository, you can find all of the STL files needed to print your own one-to-one -one proton pack our goal is to make the best easy to use 3d principle version of the proton pack from ghostbusters ghostbusters 2 and ghostbusters afterlife you can use the full project or parts of it for your build it is very versatile they took the time and effort to make almost everything needed to build one the shell legris banjos clippers brackets the mark 4 uses afterlife pack details as default but you will be able to make any version like previously the mark 4 this is important is completely remodeled so it is not compatible with any old version so that means as i was saying earlier that the pre-printed parts that i'm going to be using for this build are from an earlier version so the parts or the uh, if you down if you're downloading the mark 4 build and you have parts from an older version they're not going to work so make sure that you only work from one set of files. So if you're gonna make a Mark II pack, make a Mark II pack. Or if you're gonna make a Mark IV pack, just go with the Mark IV files and stick with that. So uh, I suggest downloading the Mark IV files because that's the newest one, like I said already. Um, so in, you can also download his uh, assembly instructions, which will be here 
uh, I mentioned this in the previous video that you can do that um, there are instructions or should be instructions already for the older versions but it looks like he's going to do a new version for the mark 4 so you might want to wait for that if you want to um, and of course here's another link to the um, 3d printed Ghostbusters props group now and then there's a couple of little extra links here for remixed versions of th of extra things that you might may or may not want in, uh, such as the uh, wand with the pop mechanism and the twist mechanism um, and some other cool stuff but we're just here to get the primary file so we're gonna go up here because it actually tells us how to do it how to get all the files in a single zip so we're gonna follow the instructions and we're gonna go up here click on this and we're gonna click on download zip and then it's going to proceed to download alright so once you have the files downloaded you're gonna to want to unzip those to a folder of your choosing I'm not gonna show you how to do that because it's 2023 and if you're building a proton pack you probably already know how to use a computer well enough to unzip a zip file so once you have those unzipped on your computer and got all that ready to go the next thing and this is just a personal preference of mine you can choose to do this however you want but there's a lot of files once you open that zip file you will notice that there's a lot of files to be printed for this proton pack and that can be a bit confusing when you when you don't really know what a lot of this stuff is so what I like to do and you can like I said you can do this however you choose to do it what I like to do is create a good old Google spreadsheet and go down and just list all of the parts that are in that uh, file package so I've just listed a few of them here um, I put a little header thing here maybe we can just make that bold so it stands out a little bit more maybe we'll just uh, fill this in so it's a little bit more um, professional looking but what I'm what I do is, is I just go in here and I just make a list of every single part that I need to print and as I print them I'll just come in here and just highlight it so that I know that I don't have to print that part anymore. Super simple. Maybe it's dumb. Maybe you don't need to do this. But I like to keep things organized. And this helps me see how many more parts I have to print. And like I said, this is not anywhere near the amount of all of the parts that you need to print. But this is just as an example in case you wanted to do that. All right, so now that we have the files downloaded, I've gone ahead and opened them up. So we can kind of look and see what we're looking at here. Um, it is kind of structured you know within a folder system and you have things that you know categorized into where they are on the pack for example so we have a fo folder for the shell we have a folder for the one and then there's some bonus things here if you want to uh, mess around with those so um, we're gonna start with the shell because that's where most of our files are gonna be first and then of course you will print the wand at some point um, but first we're going to focus on the shell so we're going to come to the shell and of course you got more folders we got our accessories our booster crank gen gun mount uh, bumper center cover cyclotron motherboard and synchronous generator so I think that because some of you this might be your first foray into 3d printing it is the best idea to print something small first even if it's not something that is going to be a major piece of the shell or even a piece of the shell at all I think printing something small to make sure that you just got the hang of printing things something that doesn't need any supports is going to be the best thing and then you can work your way up to the harder stuff so we're gonna start with a clippered valve and so there's a lot of options for these things so you're gonna to need to do your research and figure out which one of these that you want for your pack because a lot of people don't realize that different packs had different models of clippers in different places and if you're a Ghostbusters nerd like I am you probably already know that and if you're not then I would suggest going to somewhere like gbfans.com look up their um, proton they have a lot of lot of information about the the history of the proton pack and all of the different uh, ones that the Ghostbusters wore and how they had different pieces of equipment on them some of them had the 331 clippered valve and some of them had the 701 and, and they're in different you know in different uh, 
orientation in different formations on the proton pack. Some of them were on the wand, some were on the shell. It just depends on whose proton pack you're trying to replicate. And if you're not trying to replicate any particular Ghostbusters pack, then you can put them wherever you want. So um, no judgment here. We're all about creativity in the 3D printed proton pack world. You know, we like seeing cool stuff. So if you don't want to make your make your proton pack exactly like Egon Spengler or Peter Venkman, that's totally cool. So um, I'm going to start with this first file here we're going to open this up in cura which i already have open um, as you can see here this is the body of the clifford valve um, got the little text across the uh, front there just like the original uh, now some people like to because this, and this will give me a chance to talk about this some people will want to opt to use a real Clippered valve because you can still order these directly from Clippered and then there are some makers out there who have made resin ones So if you would like to go with that option, you totally can but Q and mark have made these So that if you want to 3d print as much of this as possible, you can 3d print these so um, In this case, this is something that's really easy to print and I would suggest that if you have a resin printer um, To print this on a resin printer because it'll look a lot better the details will show up a lot better on a resin printer but if you don't have a resin printer you can totally print this on an FDM uh, printer like an Ender 3 or a CR10 um, the letters might show up a little weird on an FDM printer but I've printed a few of these and you know it's been it's been pretty pretty okay so um, we're just using this as, as an example so that you can print something that's really easy starting off so you don't have to try to print something super complicated. You can definitely choose something else from the folder if you would like to print something else. Um, it's totally up to you. This is mostly just for us to learn how to print. For those of you who are watching this who have no idea you know, how to even start. Um, I'm not going to assume in this tutorial that uh, you're a complete beginner to 3d printing i'm going to assume that you know at least some basics there are a lot of videos already out there for people if you need to know the absolute basics of 3d printing like leveling your bed and you know loading your filament and all of those good things there's already a ton of videos about that so we're going to stick to as it relates specifically to printing this uh, proton pack so um, with that in mind we're just going to go through the settings i already have this loaded it's on the print bed these are my settings you might say hey i don't i think your settings are dumb you know i use different settings if it works for you it works for you these are the settings that work for me um you're feel free to change the settings to your liking um so i pretty much always print all of these uh proton pack parts in 0.2 millimeter resolution that's kind of the standard uh, i don't see any reason to print any, any higher than that uh, because we're going to be doing a lot of sanding and filling anyway so maybe for something like the clipper you would you know maybe try to use, maybe you would want to use you know 0.12 or even 0.16 but for the most part we're going to stick to 0.2 so we're going to leave that there um, which is our layer height so you know then we're going to come down most of this is just already going to kind of be set for you um, I usually print everything with four top layers and four bottom layers uh, with our 0.8 as our thickness. And then I usually go with somewhere between 15 and 20% infill. You can definitely, you know, change that to your liking. Um, I find that those are, you know, that's plenty in terms of sturdiness for these uh, proton pack parts you don't need to go up to like 50 or 100 or any of that to for these to be strong um, i typically use cubic for my infill pattern and then um, depending on your filament brand that you're using i'm using inland filament from micro center and i know a lot of you are going to be like eh, why is he using that cheap crap well it works it's fine i've not had any issues with it so use the filament you want to use but I mentioned that because your print temperature settings as well as your build plate temperature settings might be different than mine if you're using different filament. So my particular filament prints the best at 215 degrees 
and I like to keep my build plate temperature at 50 degrees so that I get good bed adhesion. You might actually hear my 3D printers running right now because I'm printing some stuff um, as we speak. So, and then I have my print speed set at 50, um, my outer, my wall speed at 25, outer wall, inner walls, all at 25, and uh, and then my initial layer speed is at 20, and then we have some other settings down here that are just not really that important um, and then under supports we're gonna uncheck generate supports because this model doesn't need supports and the vast majority of them don't need supports and you'll get to a few where you're like are you serious I can print this with no supports and the answer is yes you can print it with no supports and I don't know how it works but it does so um, then you come down here you can use your build plate adhesion of choice some people like to use uh, a skirt some people like to use a brim it is totally up to you which one you use I like to use rafts um, this one probably could I could get by with either skirt or brim I don't recommend not using uh, this um, I don't even know if that's a choice but I would either go with skirt or brim and if you're you know you're bed is a little wonky and you can't get it quite leveled go with a raft um, that's kind of what I use those for if I if I can't get my bed quite quite level the raft kind of helps bridge the gap there so but for this one we'll probably just go with brim um, and just leave everything kind of default and that's pretty much it so once you do that all you gotta do is come down here and hit the slice button says it's going to take an hour and 53 minutes it's going to use 16 grams of filament and it's going to cost me about 28 cents to make the body of this clippered valve and then what i'll do is then i'll click save to disk i will save that to my little usb uh, sd card um, and then that will go to my printer and then i'll just go ahead and print that off so once you have your first piece printed if that prints successfully then you are well on your way to printing your 3d printed ghostbusters proton pack so in the next video we will start working on the post-production process because you've got a lot of printing ahead of you and that's going to take you a long time and it's going to take me a long time to get all of this stuff sanded so in the next video, we're going to talk about what you need to start the post-production process on the files um, once you have them printed.